Yeah, you're yeah, very yeah. open about um, mental health struggles yeah. and particularly about your experience coming out to your mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For people that don't know that story, could you, yeah, enlighten them, tell them what that was like and what a weight that was like for you? On yeah, lifting. yeah. I mean, I was a, I was a pretty sad young man. Um, I knew immediately that I was different to my friends. Me and my, I had a big bunch of friends. We used to get skateboarding and BMXing. Um, and it was kind of like a, it was it was a big group of, of of us, and I just could tell that I was different. When they started getting girlfriends, I wasn't interested. Um, they were hanging around having girls with us, and I wasn't interested. And um, one one time in particular, one of my friends said, "Like, oh, how come you don't want to, you know, get with one of these girls?" And I was like, well, "I'm just not interested." And he was like, "You're just not interested in girls," or and I was like, "I I don't know." And he said, "Are you trying to tell me you're gay?" And at that point, I think I was like 13. And for me, sexuality wasn't into it. It was just, I was just quite content popping all these on my skateboard. And and then, and then all of a sudden that made me feel really different. They abandoned me. They didn't want to speak to me after that. And I've come to realize that, you know, kids can be mean, but I think also you're scared by what you don't understand sometimes. So I've kind of made peace with that. But then I hated myself for a long time after that. Um, just hated being different and and and, you know, being sort of abandoned for something I couldn't control really upset me and really scarred me. Um, and it wasn't until really um, I, I wrote No Matter What where I finally become confident with my sexuality. After I told my friends, I told my mum and, and, you know, and that was, she was perfect. She was amazing. But when you're a young person, you fr lose all your friends. It's like you've, of you course, know, your, your whole world falls apart. Yeah. Um, but music really gave me that um, sort of, that vessel to be able to, to control that emotion. I made, I made, you know, peace with the past. And what it's actually given me is an opportunity to be able to relate to other people. You know, I still get messages to this day from people all around the world saying, you know, no matter what helped me come out to my family or it's helped me sort of empower myself. And now I'm the best version of myself I could be. And it's, that's really nice. I mean, it kind of makes me feel like I wouldn't change anything I went through because I've now been able to create something that, has been used as a medicine, mm. I guess. But I will say that the fact that you can be yourself now and be in the industry and um, make music as yourself. I remember when we were speaking to Darren Hayes from Savage Garden, he was talking about, you know, he is who he is now and he can be open and proud about that. But during the height of his success, he couldn't be who he wanted to be and he yeah. had to hide that. And I just think that would be so hard. But for yeah. you, the peace that comes being able to just be yourself must be just a weight that's lifted. Yeah, I mean, I guess when uh, when we were going to release Dancing On My Own, I was terrified that but this was before I'd started talking about my sexuality. And I was terrified that people would think that if I suddenly started talking about it, that it would be like a sympathy vote to get, you know, more music and more sales. So we, before I came out, before we released the single, I sat with my label, I was, you know, very honest, got very upset, you know, I don't know if I want to talk about my sexuality yet, I don't know if I want to be, because I'm a very private guy, um, and we delayed bringing out the single so that we could accommodate me talking to the press about my sexuality, wow. plus my dad lives in Canada, um, so he, he still didn't know by then, so I was like 26, he still didn't know, I didn't think it was fair for the press to, to get a hold of that story and for him to find out from the press, so it was a tough time for me around that time, but... Do you know what? Like the the reason why I now go around with my sexuality on my sleeve and, and I'm very proud is because if I'd have had a song like that when I was growing up, I'd have mm. felt a lot more comfortable within myself. You know, so I'm just trying to just trying to make the world a bit of a better place. Is the the ten you're from? Is it called Hull? Is that right? Yeah. After that initial thing with your friends, were you able to then kind of find you, your your crew like there, or did you? It was part of the answer then getting out and getting to a bigger city no i guess um you know when you're from a city like that you can't you, you can't some people live and die in those in in small cities like that you know because opportunities are less and you know it's harder to get jobs and all that kind of stuff um and so when i came out i was still in school um i was surrounded by you know by the same people so i was kind of like trying to find my way and and luckily i managed to find you know people who um, we're going through the same sort of thing as me, but wasn't saying it out loud. So we kind of silently found each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. um, and then that just kind of made me feel confident enough to be able to start talking about it within my immediate group. And then that grew and grew. But, uh, you know, you, if you speak to any person who's struggled with their sexuality, you feel like you're coming out all the time. Because if, you, if it's not obvious, then you feel like if somebody says, oh, you know, have you got a, a girlfriend? Oh, actually, I'm I'm gay, and then you you kind of feel like you're having to come out time and time again. I think that's what scares a lot of people. Um, but 
you know what i think it's just there's a certain point where you just make peace with it mm. and like for me now here if i was to say i'm gay when i was like 13 14 all the way through to about 26 27 it was such a big deal mm. whereas now i just don't care mm. i think you get to a point where you, in life you just go I don't really care what other people think. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And not in like a negative way, no. just in like a, if you've not got anything nice to say to me, then I don't care for your opinion. No. You I know also, what I mean? I also think it's exhausting. Caring constantly about... Oh, yeah. You know, these things that other people are thinking about it's just exhausting but you know and it's you get like, older you, you get know, tired yeah you do you do <laughs> and and this is what we were saying about on twitter yesterday right is yeah. that sometimes it can be a bit of a negative space is my you know my experience of twitter it's like you do look through for the negative comments you know instagram mm. and facebook is people that have actively wanted to follow you but twitter it can be mm. members of the pub general members mm. of the public and everybody has an opinion and everybody's entitled to one but it's still hard to read you know, you suck or... You, and you most know, people's opinions don't matter. So well, you can have an opinion, but... Yeah. We don't care to hear it. <laughs> Callum doesn't care to hear it. Yeah, well, there you go. 